Hey guys, my name's Stu and welcome to another one of my videos. I've now had my MG4 a month and I thought this would be a great time to talk to you about the 10 things I love about this car and a couple of little things which I dislike. Let's jump into it, starting with number 10, top things I like about this car. Now looks are subjective, but this is how I feel about my MG4. Now one thing you can't argue with is the looks of this vehicle. It looks good, it's sharp, it's edgy, it's got great lines, it looks sporty and has that aggressive look which I think a hatchback has been missing for a long time. Even on the school run the lads are looking at the car but it's not only the outside which has wowed me. I love the two spoke steering wheel, the floating dock with a rotary dial. It has that minimal feel like a Tesla has with functional tactile buttons which is complemented by the widescreen infotainment. Never thought I'd say this, but I think MG have made a very good looking, attractive car. One of the things which struck me when I first saw this car is how solid it feels. Actual tactile, solid moving buttons, which feel sturdy and solid. Even the door handles feel very premium. Even the indicator stalks feel absolutely solid. Don't get me wrong, this isn't a premium vehicle, but for the price point, I think you're getting more than your buck. Now there are some scratchy plastics and you can see where they're trying to save some money but they spent the money in the right places and on a whole I think they've done a very good job. Exterior wise again still feels very solid. Just listen to this door. Even my Tesla Model 3 doesn't sound as good as that. And unusually there's something quite humorous about pulling this bung out. I was very far on taking my vehicle on collection. Checking all the panels, pushing the front, pushing the lights, checking the aero wheel trims, the wing mirror, the wipers, everything. And it's very reassuringly good. Even the exterior fascia boards like, like this on the door is very well put together. Even the boot lid is solid. Now I have already done a video on the storage of this vehicle, which you can click on the link above to watch. Which also reminds me, if you're enjoying this video and the videos I'm producing, don't forget to like and subscribe. But not only is the storage good on this car, the cabin space is just incredible. It's like a TARDIS. Now we've done a few road trips and we've taken friends and family along with us. And the first thing they always say is, and generally following complimenting the looks of the car, the next thing they always say is just how big it is inside. There's loads of foot space, arm space. There's plenty of room in the back, there really isn't any compromises here. And of course, a more spacious cabin is a more desirable place to be. It's definitely a car worth considering. So well done MG. I'd love to know what you think about the cabin space. Have you been a passenger? What was it like for you? And of course, there's storage on tap in this car, in the front and in the rear. And you'll be surprised just what you can store in here. And probably lose. Now what is it about start buttons in cars? I guess it was the natural progression from having a key in an ignition. But so many manufacturers out there still retain a button. But why? Why do you need a button these days? Let's embrace the technology if it's there to help us and make our journeys easier. So throw away the start button and use the brake pedal just like MG have done. Now I've come from a Tesla Model 3 which has probably one of the best infotainment systems out there and getting into this car and using CarPlay and also the user interface I'm actually blown away by how good it really is. Now I know many of you might disagree with that but hear me out. One of the biggest issues with the transition to electric vehicles is to make a compelling infotainment system to match and that's connected really well with the car and both the app as well. And a lot of manufacturers have failed at this and haven't really actually moved forward at all. Now this system does have its little glitches and bugs, but it's nothing which software updates won't sort out in the future. But on the whole, I think it's very responsive, it has everything to hand, and of course because you do have Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, you have everything at your fingers. Oh and I forgot to note, the stereo is really good as well, speaker system is really good, and even though the base does have a bit of a ceiling, I still think it's more than good enough for most people. The widescreen display is a Brilliant move by MG. This does everything, it's got plenty of space on it. And not forgetting the quick buttons underneath the screen which give you access to things like your climate, your volume. The screen also complements the dash and the aesthetics of the front of the car and doesn't cause too much distraction either. The driver's binnacle display is also really good 
and that along with the main display work really well together. Now the driver's binnacle has everything you need, it's got all the driving stats, you can see your driver aids, speed limits etc. Everything you need to know in front of you. It's very easy to have too much on your screen and also not enough. But I think MG have got this just right. Now one thing that's important with an electric vehicle is the charging. And from multiple tests I've done with the vehicle so far, I can confirm it has a very good charging curve. And that's really, really important because everyone needs to know they're going to charge for a short amount of time as they possibly can and reach kind of that end goal so they can leave on time and get on with their journey. Now, although I haven't seen the peak charging rates which this vehicle's advertised at, I do feel that will come in the warmer months. This is an LFP battery pack, so it's going to suffer in the colder months. But on the whole, generally, I'm really happy with the charging. Now, who would have thought the cheapest electric car on the market right now? It's actually one of the most fun, exhilarating, well-planted, and in my eyes, a bit of a hot hatch. It reminds me of my Peugeot 205 days. Driving through lanes, wheel in each corner, feeling the road, and I really get this from this car. And not only that, it handles really well. It's solid, it's so planted to the ground. The steering's really responsive, the brakes are good. It's just an all-round good car to drive. And when I'm not having too much fun in it, I'm also enjoying the road trips. Even the passengers I take in this car remark on how comfortable it is. I recently did a 70 mile an hour motorway range test in this car and I have to say it was so comfortable to sit in for two and a half hours and even after that long time in the car I still felt refreshed, I didn't feel tired at all. It's been a while since I've got into a car weeks down the line and I'm still as excited to get into it and drive the car than I did the first day. Now one of the things I've really appreciated with owning this car is how good the app is. It's not over complicated, it does everything you need it to do. From scheduling your charging, locking and locking the vehicle, turning the HVAC on and off, or checking your battery percentage. Even little extra things like finding nearest chargers, and then being able to navigate to them, is really thoughtful and intuitive, and I think many people would take advantage of this. And it also has information on there like where your local dealership might be, service centre, that sort of thing with phone numbers. It even has a feedback area. If there's anything you feel the app is missing or, or if there's an issue with your car, you can leave it in the feedback area. And there's one thing I'm definitely going to enjoy on those colder mornings. It's being able to turn the heating on in the car before I get in there in the morning. It can all be done through the app. You can set your charge, your speeds. You can also see what, what kind of power the car is pulling. Lots of data available, which may interest you, may not, but it's there if you need it. One of the other things you can do is have a bit of fun with the car. You can give it a nickname and add all your personal information as well. Some other bits you can do is set up your alarm notifications. Also at your fingertips is the car manual. So any questions you may have about certain setups or certain information which you might not know on the surface, you can deep dive in here. Also in the app, you have the rescue call number. So if you do have any trouble on the road, you can jump into this on the app and make that rescue call. And you also have a message inbox, which you'll find any notifications you get about the vehicle. Now, unfortunately, this isn't something I've tested myself, but I thought it was worth mentioning because I don't think it's covered very often. And that's vehicle to load. What does that mean? It means with the right adapter plugged into your vehicle, you can discharge energy from your battery and power household goods, anything from a kettle, maybe a laptop, maybe you're at the beach of the day and you want to power a cooler or a grill. It's certainly something that's going to be very handy and it's going to have lots of use cases. And finally, number one, the price. Now you can't ignore that this is a very well priced vehicle. It's kind of the entry to the market and if you're new to EVs or you're trying to make that first transition into EV ownership both through purchase and through leasing this really makes it accessible. A lot of EVs in this segment are generally about seven or eight thousand pounds more just for the entry level trim so well done MG on this. Now I did say there was a couple of things I did dislike about the vehicle so let's touch on them now. So the first one is I'm not sure if this is a cost cutting plan from MG but one thing I think they've really overlooked is the rear cabin light. There isn't one. 
So if you want to jump into the back of this car in the evening when it's dark, then you are going to struggle to find the seat belt and where to snap it in place. And I've had passengers who have been fumbling around with their phones trying to find where to plug their seat belt in. Now I am kind of nitpicking at this one, but one of uh, my bugbears is the fact that when you set up the car with your own driver profile and you select on a region, what the pedal response is like, it doesn't remember it the next time you get in the car, which means if you want to use that same setting, you have to physically go in and change it each time. Now it's not the end of the world, but if you're going to have a custom setup, the car should retain those settings each time. But hopefully this can be sorted out with an over the air update. And lastly, the third one is the driver assist. Now if anyone's used lane keep and assist or you're using cruise control and you just want to remain in the center of the lane using the driver aids, they're incredibly unreliable and you find yourself very nervously clutching that steering wheel and not willing to really trust the car. So I think these will be sorted in an update, but for the moment I'm probably going to avoid using them for the time being. So after one month, my conclusions are that this is definitely a vehicle worth considering if you're looking to jump into the EV segment. This is a very, very good car. It's great to drive and charges really well. I think any niggles or any cons which I may have mentioned about the car are so outweighed by the pros. I mean, it re there really is a lot of good things about this car. I think your toughest decision is going to be when buying this car is do you go for the standard range or the longer range stroke trophy model. I found the standard range battery pack more than enough for me as a user and I do mixed driving. And I think the SE spec is really good as well. The seats are great. The interior is great. All the safety functions you get with the car and the autonomy is absolutely brilliant. And for many manufacturers, you will pay extra for these. But the icing on the cake here really is the price point for this vehicle. Whether you go for the standard range SE or the long range or the trophy, I think you're doing really well with your money. Now, as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, these are my impressions. I know everyone will have different experiences. So uh, let me know in the comments below how you've got on with yours. What do you enjoy about your MG4? What do you dislike? Let me know in the comments and let's get talking about it because it's an interesting subject and I'd love to hear your thoughts on it. And that's it for this video. Thanks again for your support with the channel. And please don't forget to like and subscribe. And I'll see you again in the next one.